Hello and welcome to Stratfest final Meet the Festival for the 2021 season uh, for the Finally There's Cabaret uh, cabaret. Finally, there's Sun Cabaret. I can't talk today. I'm sorry. This is just how it goes. My name is Stephanie Johns, and I am Education Associate here at the Stratford Festival. Uh, and I'm so excited to be able to talk to both Sarah Farb and Steve Ross this morning um, in discussing their cabaret, Finally, their Sun uh, Theater, and also their careers. So, as always, uh, during Meet the Festival, we welcome your questions. Uh, so, please, please, please write your questions in the YouTube chat, and they will be filtered over to me, and I will ask our amazing artists. Um, um, but before we begin, I do want to take a few moments to recognize the land. Um, I'm currently in my home in Stratford, and uh, I'm on the original territory of the Adirondack, uh, the Anishinaabe, and the Mississaugas. And I, I'm grateful every day for the caretakers of this land. And I encourage you at home um, to do some research. Um, there's a there's a lovely website, native-land.ca, for you to find out who um, came before you on the land you live on. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce our lovely artist this morning. So Steve Ross is the co-curator and co-director of and ensemble in Finally There's Sun. This is his 18th season at the festival and during those 18 seasons you may have seen him in The Music Man, The Rocky Horror Show, I saw it a lot, uh, Guys and Dolls, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Shakespeare in Love, Hamlet, The Alchemist, Man of La Mancha, Crazy Few, and Tommy, and that's again just to name a few. Um, he also has graced the stages um, big and small uh, at Can Stage, Talk is Free Theater, um, Musical Stage Company, The Grand Theater, Mervish and Neptune, Aquarius, Chicago Shakespeare, uh, The Citadel, and ATF. Um, Steve has also written and directed a number of projects, uh, with the most recent of his works, Goldfish, being performed uh, with Here for Now Theater in Stratford right now. And then we have the lovely Sarah Farb, and uh, she is co-creator and co-director of and singer in Finally Their Son. This is her sixth season here at the festival. Um, Sarah's Broadway de debut was playing Delphi in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Um, and at Stratford, she's played Juliet and Frank, which I also saw a lot. Um, <laughs> Cordelia, Mary in The Last Wife and The Virgin Trial. Petra in A Little Night Music. Lucy in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, and Constance in She Stoops to Conquer. Cherry in Beau's Stratagem. And Jessica in The Merchant of Venice. And elsewhere, you might have seen her in Fun Home for the musical stage company and Mervish, and The Humans for Citadel and Can Stage. Sarah's performed in productions at Soul Pepper, Theatre Calgary, Tarragon, Theatre Pass Marai, Seagal Center, and YPT, among many others. Um, Sarah and Britta uh, Johnson's original music, Kelly v. Kelly, was postponed due to COVID, but we'll hopefully see a full production um, this coming theatre season, which is very exciting. Um, so welcome to both of you, and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so my first question, um, it's actually my question, now, we'll get to um, audience questions soon. Um, can you articulate how it feels um, to be back performing on stage after such a long hiatus? And anyone can go first. What an easy question. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, it's unusual. It feels really good, um, but there's a lot there's a lot that I forgot happens that to, to relearn a lot about nerves, a lot about um, stage presence, I think, um, sort of um, stamina, a, a performance schedule. Um, once you're on that hamster wheel, you sort of don't realize how much effort it takes to sustain a, an eight show week mm -hmm. or even a 90 minute show so um yeah relearning that you you sort of lose it quickly it's like working out for a while and then just stopping and it takes a long time to rebuild the muscle uh, so i'd say yeah it's been a learning curve <laughs> yeah it's 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 definitely a muscle isn't it i think it's the best way to to, to put it it's uh it's something that janine pearson one of the vocal coaches here at the festival always refers to us who work here as thoroughbreds and uh and 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 olympians and that kind of thing that i mean, who knows if that's true or not but but it's it's true that thoroughbreds are meant to run and are meant to to stay in shape and uh and boy 18 months is a long time to be away it was it was a whole series of of firsts being being back in the in the building being back in the rehearsal hall being back on stage 
Um, but I'm telling you, that was awful sweet walking out that first day and having an audience there. It was, uh, you, you, you really forget how much of your whole being becomes, I don't know whether that means that we're just attention hogs and, 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 and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it, it was, it was so lovely to, to all of a sudden hear applause, which was a, a very foreign thing. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's been, it's been wonderful. And it's been very different to be back, uh, to be outside. So it's been a, it's been a very different year, uh, all, all told. Um, I would also add to that, that as an audience member, um, and a lover of theater and a worker at the theater, it, same thing it's like oh how does how does being an audience member work i don't i don't remember anymore and it was such a special feeling when i got to see the first cabaret this summer and just go oh this is this is what i needed for my heart and for my soul and just to be like yes like theater is something i need in my life it's just like water it's just like anything else and it just brought me so so much joy um and every pr pr production i've seen this year i'm just like oh it just brings me so much happiness so I'm, I'm so glad that it also is bringing that for you even if it is like oh yeah let's get back into this and figure it out yeah so we have a lovely question um, that kind of stems off what you were saying, uh, Steve, from Jeffrey Liu. Uh, he says, Sarah and Steve, we had the honor and privilege to see your show this past Thursday in the cold and damp. How hard is it to concentrate and sing when it's really cold and wet? Oh, you were there the really cold day. Okay. <laughs> that was an adventure that day. That's that's the coldest we've been. I, uh, I kept looking over. Sarah has Sarah has sleeves that generally come to her wrists, but you can tell how cold it is because they progress down because Sarah's hands get so cold. And she was standing <laughs> beside me the whole time, and by the end, I could only see baby fingertips. Yes. So I I knew we were cold that day, but yeah. uh, it was I don't know it did, it didn't um, I was okay I had I had enough layers on that day, but but Sarah, you were freezing that day. I have terrible circulation. It's it's a bad thing. And and the the standing up and then sitting down for for longest stretches um, during numbers that that I'm not in are just sort of the thing that puts me over the edge. And it's a you can only be warm so much by the light of your colleagues shining on stage, because <laughs> uh, then your temperature drops and basically you're sitting still. And by the end, it's pretty it's chattery, it's shaky. So it's um it's a challenge it's a challenge <laughs> i think the thing that i think the thing that i worry about the most because i'm i'm a little bit cold but i'm at least getting up and down as sarah says i i then start to get neurotic about oh god they hate it in the audience and they're freezing and they wish they could go home and they this and that and mm -hmm. so i just worry about the audience more yeah. having to just sit there because I've, I've sat in the audience in a cold in a cold outdoor festival and and it's it gets on your mind and it's and it's hard to it's hard to enjoy the show that way so yeah i get i get worried about the audience so thank you for thank you for sitting through that cold day <laughs> um and also have there been any um challenges with out, being outdoors aside from cold and weather um that you didn't expect like noise or anything like that from the world that you've noticed it's been okay there's there it is it, the, the the one wall at the back of the audience is a bit of a thoroughfare for people who go on their daily walks with dogs and kids and stuff. And so there's, and I don't think people often, I don't think occasionally people know that there's something going on. So you'll hear loud, loud kids or at, at, at inappropriate moments or whatever. But I mean, what are you going to do? It's, it's outdoors and the odd siren and things. We filmed the, 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 the show for streaming on Tuesday and we filmed both both performances and so of course we were all hyper aware of you know a water bottle dropped during one of my numbers and you thought oh no we've lost it and then and then a siren went off and so we were we were hyper aware on the Tuesday about about the noise but it's not been it's not been too bad hmm. And what about, for the filming days, um, did that change how you were doing things? Did you, um, or did you just feel like it's another show day and um, let's go with it? How did you feel on those film days? 
as much as we wanted to feel that way, um, there were cameras right in our faces and, and the audience was dispersed largely just to the sides. Mm. Um, so we tried to include them as much as possible. Um, but it did, I mean, I think we did our show really well that day. I think especially the first show felt like we could probably go with that and it would feel good. Mm -hmm. Um, which, which felt really nice. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like with the shooting of, of the Shakespeare plays or whatever, it's, you're never not aware that a camera's on you. And, um, there's something nice about distance, <laughs> uh, on a stage from an audience, like not being able to see if, if there's something in my nose <laughs> or something, you know, like you don't want a, a take to be ruined, but <laughs> because something's in my nose during a song <laughs> that would that would be so sad yeah um, so there's there's an awareness of hyper closeness um that sort of shifts focus for me a little but um anytime i would i would find myself um thinking about that i would just remember this was a live show first and foremost and it sort of helped i do think the product is going to be good it sounds great. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. Uh, ooh, we have another question from the audience. Wynn Walters, thank you. Um, so they've seen two cabarets, and it seems like this is a series that combines veteran performers with newcomers, often first-timers at the Stratford. Or at Stratford. Um, is this intentional? In your opinion, and for yours, I suppose, is it intentional or was it intentional? Uh, it, was, it wasn't a deal breaker, but it was. we, we were very excited to find two two newbies to, to the festival, um, we love we loved both we 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 already loved Noah and Jermaine just from their talent and they were our first picks, uh, but we were also thrilled that, that we could introduce Stratford audiences to them. They uh, so so it was it was somewhat intentional for us. Um, we 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 thought about a lot of folks. Um, it was very interesting to be part of the casting process. Mm -hmm. Whereas usually as actors, you just sort of pray to be cast and, and, and hope for a job. And then all of a sudden to have the ability to give work to two other people. But we were, uh, yeah, we, we, were, we were very excited and, and we continue to be excited as we hear the reactions to, to both of them uh, in the cabaret every day because they, they have some pretty flashy numbers. And, and it's, uh, so it's great. We're, 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 we're so pleased that they were on board. Awesome. Um, so kind of stemming from that, how did the process of curating this cabaret um, differ from previous collaborations uh, like the Victory Cabaret and the New Cabaret? If it uh, did. <laughs> it, 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 we had a lot more time. I think um, we were very um, intent on making this a clear, a clear story as clear a story as possible, given what we were setting out to do, which was to sort of trace through the pandemic. Um, and so it, it, not not to say that like we approached any of the other ones without the same kind of intention, but I think that the gravity and, and the um, the weight of of this story and these choices uh, were, were greater. Um, people have been very pleased with um, how intentionally things have been seems seem to have been chosen. The songs, the the bits of text, um, and we're very proud of that because it was with great intention and and with a lot of thought and um, and attention to detail and. Uh, I would say, given the same amount of time, probably we could say the same for the others, but, but this definitely felt like a much more um, meditative and, and uh, conscious decision cycle. <laughs> it also, it, I found it also changed more in the room. We, with, with the new cabaret and the victory cabaret, we would rehearse, we would catch rehearsals as we could because we were all in an eight show schedule. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a bit of catch as catch can. This was a straight six days of being able to focus just on the work. And so 
things were changing right up to we made a we made a cut the day before we left the rehearsal hall even uh just because we thought you know what we're still we're still honing this this still mm -hmm. this one this one just isn't making sense now that we're hearing it all the way through and stuff mm -hmm. so so we were we were making changes like that in a way that we didn't with the new, with the new cabaret or victory Oh, that's very cool to know. Um, we have uh, another question that kind of goes along with this. Um, Paula Brown, um, she's wondering how long did it take to develop the content of this um, wonderful and inspiring cabaret? So you kind of talked about that it was a longer process, but do you know approximately how long? We, Anthony talked to us back in December mm -hmm. initially. And, uh, and, and there, was, there was actually talk of, of, of just remounting the Victory Cabaret. Uh, because it was it was somewhat triumphant and whatever and and the more we the more we thought about it the more we got ideas to to, to come up with a new show so uh, so yeah it, it it was it was since so I guess about six months which is longer than than we had the we had for the other cabarets but wow. but uh, certainly certainly I think mid December we were we were spoken to yeah so. awesome. And we have a question from Elizabeth Thomas. You mentioned in Healing Through Music that you had tons of songs you ended up not using. Is there a song you wish could have been included? Oh, that's <laughs> a good question. One song, the song that we cut um, that day before we left was Back to Before from Ragtime, which, mm. which for a long time was like a staple of the show. Um, it was very much a centerpiece. And then hearing it in context, it was just feeling a bit redundant and dragging things out a bit. Um, but that's a song, that's a song I love um, far, far before we put this, this show together. It's and but especially in the context of a show like this, the, the sentiment of it. Um, and just the songwriting is is just so stunning. It's such a gorgeous song. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, the B side would would have that song to me. The the the, the DVD version with it'll be in the cuts. <laughs> yeah, be the director's cut. And what about you, Steve? Was there a song that kind of you really wish you could have made think. happen? It seems it it's, it it seems like because because for 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 about at least three months, this has been the set list. We, we figured out, we narrowed it down to, to this set list. But yes, there were there were definitely a couple of tunes that it did hurt to think, ah, okay, no, I guess it won't fit. I mm -hmm. guess it won't. But, but now I can't imagine a structure different than this one. Right. So it's, so it's it, because, because we've been doing it for so long and it feels in our bones now, not for so long, only three weeks, but, but, uh, um it's that's long for a cabaret and uh yeah it, uh, it's so so it, it it feels like this is the structure that 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 we and i'm 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 pleased with it i i've i've yet to tire of any of the music as i sit there and listen to the other three every day sing it it's which is which is i think a testament to to the fact that we chose the right tunes but Absolutely. yeah there's always ones that got away yeah. <laughs> uh, we have another question from Paula Brown, um, and she's wondering, did you consider the effect that the pro-vaccine content might have on a vaccine-hesitant patron? In fact, absolutely yeah. did. Oh, yeah. We had actually a, a, a walkout the other day. Yeah. Um, a vaccine-hesitant, I don't know what their exact um, stand was, but it, it had everything to do with the vaccine the pro-vaccine content um and okay <laughs> yeah it's it's tricky i i don't i mean i guess i'm pro-vaccine so uh, i and and so and, and, and as are many people and and are the large portion of the audience it seems when 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 we we read a statistic every day and we update that statistic about how what the percentage is of, of eligible canadians who are vaccinated and it always gets a round of applause, which makes me think, okay, we are, we are doing the right thing. But, but yeah, I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to turn anyone off, and you don't want to turn. I felt, I immediately felt guilty that people had spent money, and had come to see this cabaret, and then just went, no, this isn't for us. We're, we're no, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have bought because I think they, I think they said to the house manager, we would never have bought tickets if we'd known it was about this. 
Right. And I, you know, and you try in your blurb to say, hey, join us to talk about the pandemic. Anyway, it's, I guess, I, I, I guess it's always going to be, you're, there's going to be outsiders. Who... I don't know if too, if like, it, I feel like a, a vaccine hesitant person would understand and sit and watch the show. I think it, it's, it's a little, it, 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 it probably is a little bit beyond hesitant. Um, there, there are hesitant people in my life that I have strong relationships with and we're open to conversation and nobody feels attacked. Um, and so, um, yeah, that, that's, this is the, this is the opinion of our cabaret and we incorporate information that exists about the history of mRNA vaccines and the help that it's that it's had over lots of diseases yeah absolutely thanks um and we have a question from douglas tyndall we enjoyed the music and the performances enormously we wondered about the blm focus that seemed to be mostly the u.s experience um, this person feared it could give us Canadians an excuse to ignore our own issues with race. Was that balance a consideration for you? Huh. Um, That's a great question. Yeah, it is a great question. I think uh, there was a lot of, again, a lot of content that had to be cut. Um, I will say Jermaine wrote the piece that she performs to do with the Black Lives Matter, the smearing of silent blood. Um, and that is 100% Canadian and from the perspective of a, a Canadian black woman. So um, in that regard, we're very happy to include that perspective. Um, the events, the, the events that we mentioned, the violent events, especially of George Floyd um, are undeniably the events that led to the movement that we saw occur last year. And so um, we would very much like to have included every detail of any person who has been um, hurt or, or you know, the, the subject of that kind of violence. Um, it is a reality that the events in America had the attention and led to the action. Um, I don't think anybody in Canada thinks that we have anything to feel smug about or um, better than, um, especially given the revelations of the residential schools recently. Um, that is an enormous trauma that we're dealing with ourselves. So hopefully it encapsulates um, an entire year and lifetime and generation <laughs> of oppression and um, Injustice. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add anything, Steve? Uh, I, I, it was never intentional. Well, it was. I mean, the content. But as as Sarah said, we had a lot of a lot more content, and some of it was Canadian content, and it it it, it unfortunately had to be trimmed. Mm -hmm. But it was um, it was never our intention to just to 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 say, oh, Canada, we're fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it and and it it. Um, it's it's funny how you how how you continue to go. Oh, I'd love to change this, and I'd love to tweak this, and I'd love to go back in the hall and and do, and I think that is I think that is something that I that I would go back in if if we were going to remount this next year or something. I think I think I I wonder if there is Canadian content that needs to go back in, but but uh, but I I I agree with what Sarah said that, that we we hope in a way that it encapsulates things. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I think this next question from Louise A kind of comes from that a little bit. This cabaret is a roller coaster of emotions for the audience and cast. I noted tears from some cast members mid show. How do you, the performances make you feel personally? Um, cathartic, exhausted, hopeful? Hmm. Depends on Sarah, the day. <laughs> depends on the day. Depends, yeah, it depends on the day. Um, there are you hear these songs every day and and as Steve said that you don't tire of them but sometimes you hear a lyric one day that really sticks out to you um, or 
um, you notice a castmate connecting to a, a song in a different way. And um, it's it's exhausting in the right way. It's it's it we are we're asking ourselves and we're asking the audience to to come along with us through something that we already have been through and a lot of people are not interested in revisiting. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be a heavy load, but, but by the end, it always feels like we've earned the right to celebrate and to feel the hope that we've woven into the narrative of this. And so it never feels um, unpleasant. It's usually, there is a there is some catharsis and and I I do get quite emotional singing poetry because it's a hard song to not feel emotional doing or hearing and and um, I let it I let it exist and I let it show and um, I, I let myself feel it and. Feeling it helps me enjoy the latter half of the show, which is much brighter and more hopeful. Right. Awesome. Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, it, I, I I would I would agree. It, it it feels it feels like by the end, I never I never leave the stage thinking because because I do occasionally midway through the show have an ear to the audience and think, are we, is it too much today? Are we, are we, are we reaching you today? Are you going with us today? And, uh, but by the end of the show, I feel like we have, we have brought them through the other end. And that's, and that seems to be a common thread of people who stop us after the show and say, it was heavy, but you did bring us a bit of sun at the end. So that's, that's, this is good. This is, this this was the intention so mm -hmm. absolutely and i think going back to the name of the cabaret it's like yes we're going to go through these hard times but we're going to get there together mm -hmm. yeah um, which is so nice um and i just i see there's a, a response to your answers to the blm question from douglas and he says thank you so much for your response i will add um germaine's piece was brilliant and deeply moving so just a comment there <laughs> Um, so I have another question. Um, we were able to visit Stratford twice from Stra from Ottawa in July and August, but could only see three of the cabarets. We're watching the online versions as they come out, and they are shorter. Rights problems? And I mean, I can even answer that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That is the short answer. Yeah. Yeah. There's rights are always a long, uh, long thing, and sometimes people just they don't agree, and that's kind of how it goes. But uh, I know that. Um, they're doing their best to get as many rights to as many songs as possible. So that's yeah. where we are. it's a very long, it's a very, very long process. We, we've been, we, we submitted songs back in February. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and just two days ago, we had another one approved. Yeah. So it's a, it, it comes in dribs and drabs. And so we'll see So, so we, we will hopefully have one extra one in ours. Uh, that we didn't think we'd have, which is we great. actually so. we, uh, we I think we have the most approved songs of any of them. So yeah. it'll it'll represent our cabaret very 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 well. Amazing. Yeah, That's we're exciting. happy about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to kind of the song list, um, which song for each of you um, from your cabaret uh, hits home for you maybe the most or most often or meant the most to you um, during your time of isolation? or the time of isolation. <laughs> uh, Steve sings a song called Hope by Jason Robert Brown that um, is gorgeous. It's so simple and uh, it, it, it's about the very um, delicate mo movement towards feelings of optimism. And uh, there's a, a lyric that said, that says, um, I underestimated uh, I, I got dressed. I underestimated how much that would take. And that to me is my whole April of 2020. Just like, yeah, that was what I did today. Um, and I am just immediately taken back to those days of sitting there staring at the window, contemplating 
existence, how in the world we got here and uh, the, the small, the small victories. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a, there's a song Sarah already referred to called poetry about, um, and it's, it, we have, we, the intent with all of this was to take songs and put it, see them through a pandemic lens. Mm. And I think it's one of the best fits because we, right before that, we talked about some statistics about the, the number of lives that have been lost and the number of lives that have been reported lost and actually lost and things like that. And it's, uh, it's such a, I mean, it's such a beautiful song to begin with and to, to think about, to think about the, it, it, as a memorial, it's a, it's a bit of, we, we referred to it as a bit of the memorial section that, that, and the song that follows it. And, uh, so I, 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 I feel like it's one of the best fits and it almost didn't make the cut. And I think about that every day that, that it almost, we, we, we said, should we have this one in? And then we both went, we're, we're nuts. Of course. We that was work. me. That was me being like, should we, I don't know. Uh, and, and you were like, what? <laughs> I, I, yeah. But, but I, but I think about that a lot. And, and, and you think about the process of how easily it could have been of like, ah, oh, well, we won't do it. And it's, it's one of the best songs in the show. So it's, it's I'm 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 pleased that I'm pleased we stuck to our guns or I'm, I'm pleased I got bossy with you, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Um, this kind of goes to just performing outside cabarets at 11 and 3 in the day. Um, what is it like performing in the daylight um, outside like that and being able to make eye contact with people in the audience that are not just in the first two rows of like a darkened theater. Like how does that feel or how does that mess with you as an artist or how does it not? How do you feel up there? I've come to like it. I, I, I wondered about it at first and I wondered what it would be like to look out at an entire sea of masked people. I thought that would be kind of disconnecting, but it's not because I can still see people's eyes mm. and the, and the eyes are the window kind of thing. So, but I, um, I've come to really like it. Uh, you can you can see you can see everyone uh, very clearly. You can see them getting up. You can see them restless. You can see them not restless. You can see them listening to us. And and uh, yeah, I've I've come to really like it. It's uh, I don't. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine once we get back in the theater, and I can only see the first two rows again. But but it's uh, it, it's nice to feel a, a, It's nice to feel like I can have a connection to right right to the back row with this with these outdoor audiences yeah it takes the mystery out of who's out there and uh mm. alleviates the fear a little bit i was finding with the evening shows it was harder to see people and the um the experience of being in a theater came back more strongly and uh um my my nerves increased interesting interesting yeah yeah, I did not expect that answer. That's really interesting. Um, I remember uh, I was talking to Gabe Antonacci and he said he was talking about how in their cabaret um, early on, you didn't have to wear a mask. And then as like restrictions got um, stronger, they did. And so he he was realizing like, OK, he's watching foot tapping now or um, like bobbing more rather than yeah. like watching the smiles on people's faces. Yeah. So um, it is interesting also to see those changes throughout the even this short season. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering also what you mentioned the rehearsal process in the room six days. Right, you mentioned yeah, six basically, days. yeah. Um, and so, how what was that rehearsal process like? Um, and were there any things that just made you laugh <laughs> during that <laughs> process? <laughs> yeah, singing with a mask on singing is weird. Singing with a mask on. <laughs> it's a nightmare, but we also had a, fun. We had a lot of we had a lot of laughs in in the rehearsal. It was a it was a really good room. It was a really good room. Our stage manager, Max Wilson, is a is a joker and <laughs> kept it light for us. And it was it was I mean, it was it was nice, too, because initially you think, oh, my God, six days. That's not enough time. But it it really was. People came ready to people came ready to play. People came with some work already done under their belts and things. And so we were able to work really, really hard on for for concentrated periods of time and then take breaks it's very it's a it's a it's a lot of singing that that four people are just doing and so it's not like a musical where 
oh, I'm not in these next three scenes and I can get a break and things. So it's, um, we had to be very conscious of, of making sure that there was laughter and fun and, and taking a lot of breaks and things and, 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 and knowing that we were in good shape and things. But yeah, no, it was uh, that boy with a singing with a mask on though. It's not my favorite thing. It's not I will, great. I will be very happy when the when that regulation gets lifted. Who knows when that'll be? But it'll uh, be last. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And were you wearing singers' masks, where they come out a bit farther, or just regular masks? Sometimes singers' masks, but yeah. then eventually we were holding our masks out a little, yeah, yeah. just to right. give us the space. The yeah. singers' masks were heavier. They were yeah. made out of, uh, of of a heavier fabric, and they tended to they tended to weigh weigh you down a bit mm -hmm. and i i mean i'm the only one with in the cast with a beard too yeah. but the beard affects the mask hugely so we we yeah we just we just found all of a sudden we would pull the mask away from our face a bit mm -hmm. and and you would have that little bit of freedom and right. then so it would it it, it 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 just became the easiest thing to do absolutely because i can imagine you go and then just mask and mouth you're like well that's not helpful <laughs> So. Well, and there's and there's just something psychological about it being a barrier mm -hmm. uh, and and singing past it. So I, you know, for the first, I remember coming home from the first day quite vocally tired because I was pushing too much, thinking right. I've got to get my sound out. And and we just so we just had to come to terms with we will not we will not really be able to blend and things like that until we get outside and get the masks off. Right. And that was the case. So yeah, and yeah. were you? Were there like plexiglass the walls and stuff too, or was yeah okay between us yeah yeah amazing very interesting I can't imagine just any of that really I mean I can imagine it I just it would be so hard so so hard so we're so thankful <laughs> that you was, went through that it was very strange it was very it was very strange to to have all of these barriers mm -hmm. but uh, but yeah I think I think we just had a laugh about it every once in a while and. And took a break and went outside and took the mask off for two minutes and put it back on and things. And, I enjoy yeah, bothering. No, just... I, I enjoy bothering Steve. So, I, so I would tap on the glass next to him, <laughs> and he would get angry at me. He was. He it does. Was the best. He does enjoy bothering me. So <laughs> that's fair. I think people. Yeah, when you have that kind of friendship, it's just it's you gotta have that. <laughs> um, so this is more of like a general question, just in terms of your careers. Um, when did you personally know that you wanted to perform, that that was something that you needed in your heart and in your life? Um, and were there any people or things that inspired you to do so? Mm, I was very, very young. I started as a child and it was a thing that uh, felt like a natural course for me from then it was I was I was always confused when people I knew as a kid who I would do theater with just ended up not doing it and I'd be like what else <laughs> is there <laughs> what are you doing and the answer is math mm. and uh yeah but it, it's I can't I can't remember a time in my life where this wasn't a constant mm -hmm. and it's just, I don't know. I, I enjoy other things. I just think I'm really good at what I do and I'm happy. I'm lucky enough to make a living. Mm -hmm. I'm the exact Steve? opposite. I came so late to to the game. I didn't really until I would say, gosh, 19 20 um I, I that i that i entertained any of it I, I i enjoyed it in school i was told in no uncertain terms in the ninth grade that i couldn't sing so i i shouldn't do i shouldn't do the musicals and that they did in the high school and stuff and i sort of thought okay i don't care cool i'll do the band instead and so i i didn't ever take it personally i didn't ever okay. go home and cry about it or anything so i i don't know but i I fell into it quite, quite late and, uh, and then had a really, um, uh, I, I was, I was at a local university for a, a general arts thing and had a, mm -hmm. had a theater course with a really wonderful woman, uh, a really wonderful movement teacher who sort of, I think, I think 
for me on the path. Hmm. And she, she helped me. I ended up, I ended up going to Montreal to, to theater school and she helped me audition for those, for, for both. I didn't get in the first year, so she helped me audition for both years and stuff. And, and, um, it's been wonderful. We, we reconnected over the pandemic and it's been wonderful to, to, to talk to her, uh, all these years later and get to thank her for all that and stuff. So, so that, that's been nice, but yeah, it's, it's, I, I came to it, I came to it really late. And I think I, I think I felt like I was playing catch up mm. for a lot of time. Right. Um, and then, and then the school I went to in Montreal was sort of a natural pipeline to Stratford, yeah. but it was also the time that all the, 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 the big, big musicals were, were in Toronto. And I really wanted a crack at that. So I didn't go to Stratford for the first seven years out of school. And then, and then, it, and then, and then finally sort of went, Oh, wait a second, you can do plays and musicals at this place. Sign me up. So yeah, <laughs> that, that was sort of the, the, that, that was sort of the penny dropping when I, when I could see people like Scott Wentworth doing a play and a musical in the same season. And then you thought, no, that's exactly what I want. So yeah, and I think it's kind of neat that both of you, you and Sarah, have that. Like both of you are in plays, you are in musicals, and you're both just so talented in both. And I, um, you know, both of you know I love you both. Um, but like the first time I saw you, Steve, was Pirates of Penzance in 2012, and I just everything like everything changed for me i'm just like you're so cool i need to follow your career and that's kind of <laughs> that is what happened and then eventually i got to work at the festival my first season there was the diary van frank year and i saw it over and over again from different places in the theater and the two of you just have such um well obviously a presence that's a normal word that people use about the actors but um i just mean a kindness and a, and a sweetness in your life lives but then also just such wonderful talent on those stages and i'm just so grateful to know both of you <laughs> so is what i'm trying to say here no, um, i think we're lucky i think i think we're i think we would both consider ourselves real lucky to to be here because yeah. it's it's um there are very few places that offer opportunities like this place does absolutely yeah uh, oh, we have a, another question from the audience. So Louise A, back again. Can you tell us a little more about the smearing of silent blood, please? Did Germaine uh, write it specifically for this cabaret, or did she adapt on existing song, or an existing song, sorry, and did it evolve during rehearsals? So lots of questions there. <laughs> um, this was a piece that existed already. She wrote it for school. Um, I think for a movement class or um, something, but it, it did exist already. And uh, Steve, you, you pointed me to it, right? She, she posted it on, she posted a clip of it on Instagram mm -hmm. and I listened to it and thought, oh, we, we got to ask her if she would be kind enough to, to do this song for us. Yeah. And, and, and we initially had a, a lot of statistics and a lot of names within the within the song and uh and we we tried that for the first couple of days and it started to feel really intrusive on the flow of the song the song is so beautiful and so captivating on its own that we felt like we were interrupting the flow of it so we ended up making that change to cut all of the dialogue which which was a, a it was it was a really it was probably an extra two minutes long that piece mm -hmm um with with dialogue and things but we just felt like it's the right and i and i think it is the right decision that 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 she just gets to write to do the piece as she conceived it and as she and as she wanted to do it initially mm -hmm. so but yeah we're we're so i'm so grateful that she said yes to that because it's a and i know it i know it takes it out of her when she does it because she's so committed to it and and uh it's on the filming like, day yeah. On the Deep filming day, yeah. they they asked. We not only did we do it twice, but then it, after we after we'd done the second show, the director had a had a an idea to do it straight into the camera, which I hope will be really cool, and, and uh, I, I'm sure it will be. But it was it was a big thing. We 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 both went to her and said, "Listen, if you don't if you don't want to do this three times in a day." Absolutely not. We know it takes it out of you. And, and we were always we were always wanting to be very careful during rehearsals about the whole song. We, we never we never wanted to, to, to do it too many times. And we want we always wanted to give her 
the freedom of how this how this should fit into the cabaret because it's very personal and it's and you know it was it was a unique experience that she had written this and we were we were just happy that she was generous with it amazing thank you for sharing about that that the stuff we never we never get to hear about this so i love yeah. meet the festivals for these reasons um this is a question that again is more general but um when you look back at your career so far um is there a moment whether good or bad where um it makes you think wow i can't believe that just happened or i can't believe i just did that do you have any thoughts on that again good or bad silly or ridiculous whatever whatever you want Hmm. Yeah, uh, performing on Broadway was every day <laughs> a moment like that. It, it like there, it actually infected me a little. Um, I went through a phase during Harry Potter where the the fact of performing on Broadway would chat to me in my head mm. at in, inopportune moments just just awful where i had to be so particularly focused and articulate and just saying you're on broadway this is a broadway theater look <laughs> look at the broadway and that really really messed me up but i think it was born of the disbelief that this was a lifelong dream coming to fruition and uh I, I'm still amazed and really the way that it all sort of ended was so abrupt and um, um, we never we never properly said goodbye obviously because of COVID mm -hmm. um, and so it does it does feel like did, did that actually happen there was there's no closure right <laughs> yep and so it feels like an open-ended sort of fever dream mm. of wild wild dreams coming true yeah yeah oh, for sure what, what a very interesting yeah way of it ending and just kind of like wait can we wait go back minute. let's make yeah. this happen <laughs> yeah because it was yeah. it was like it was it should have been bookended by like gratitude and and joy and just you know warmth and instead it was terror and mm -hmm. get me out of here as fast as possible absolutely absolutely yeah. And what about you, Steve? Anything that stands out? I, I think, I think about the number of opportunities I've ha had here, and the number of opportunities to play stuff that I would never have thought about. Mm. You know, I think back to the, I think back to to, to Tommy and the size of Tommy. That it that it it, it was literally the Broadway show in a Stratford theater mm -hmm. that. And I, I think I think back to the size of, of that and the and the subject matter and the and the the the, the Sturm and Drong people would wait at stage door to yell at me yeah. uh, um, because I was playing a child molester. Mm -hmm. uh, it, um, it was uh, it was a really interesting time that 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 one sticks out for me the most. It, it, it was the it was one of the. It was one of the times that you just sort of went, what? But but what do you mean you're angry with me, the actor? I just played a part, and then you know, and then and then and then interviewers would want to interview me and say, well, why would you why would you want to play someone like this? They're monsters, and you think, well, that's not our job to play, to, to judge to judge the characters. We're just playing these people, these flawed, wonderful human beings, and stuff. But I. It was the first time that 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 for the whole summer, uh, occasionally, you would have people seek you out and and actually want to harm you, because mm -hmm. of what you'd done on stage. And in a way, you take it as a giant compliment, yeah. Because you clearly got through. But in a way, you think, how do you how do you how can you not separate? It it, it, mm -hmm. it, it sort of it sort of became this interesting meta experience. That was right. one of the. I mean, it, I. I can name a, a bunch of other ones here too, but, but it's, it's, it's the, it sort of really drove home the power that we have up there on stage. Big time. And I think yeah. it separate, like people, people can't separate you, the person from the character sometimes because of 
how good you did the job you did or how like invested they ended up being in that show and it's yeah it's a beautiful thing to like realize that like wow i have this power but it's also like i'm a human be nice like this is ridiculous um but i know like randy houston had that same issue he was getting oh. some like when he in to kill a mockingbird right and and i can only imagine how hard that is to want to come to work every day and do these plays when you're like i know i'm doing a good thing and showing this but oh, it feels awful as the human on the other side of it. Yeah, yeah it's very interesting. It's very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, I remember Tyrone Savage uh, had a really, really hard time uh, in Anne Frank playing mm. a Nazi, just being yeah, the one yeah. to, to find to find us like up in the the attic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I remember that was heavy for him. He was yeah. miserable about it. Mm -hmm. And he's such a joyous human oh. being as a person. Yeah. So to like yeah. watch that, I'm sure was like really, really hard. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we have another question from the audience. So Paula Brown is wondering, why did you list the songs in alphabetical order in the program rather in order of performance? It kept me on my toes trying to find out which song you were singing each time. <laughs> Excellent question, Paula. We, uh, we have done that since we, with all the cabarets we've done, uh, because, because, uh, we, we find that occasionally, and I am guilty of it myself, if I see a song list in the, in the order that the songs are in, I will wait for a particular song, and I won't necessarily pay attention to the songs prior to that. So we found that if we just list them alphabetically and say, these are the songs you're going to hear tonight at some point, it, it alleviates that sometimes. This, is, this, is, this was our reasoning behind it. That there, there was no, there was no devious plotting or anything. But we just, we just did find, and, and I am as guilty as the next person of it, of waiting for a song. Wait, well, when, when are they going to do this one? I want to hear this one. I want to hear mm -hmm. this one. And you think, well, no, let's, let's, let's try to get away from that, and let's try mm -hmm. to just have it be alphabetical. So. I was gonna say, I do that exact thing. I look at it and like, okay, I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this. I don't know this. Okay, let's go. But I do yeah. that exact same thing. So that's yeah. funny that that was I part of it. Pure human nature. Yeah. But yeah. But it's. Uh, but yeah. It's. It's. It, it, that was. That was our. That was our plan for that. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, again, another more general question. It's a big one though. Dream cast the leads to your favorite musical theater show. Who would Ooh. you want? And you can put yourself in it. You can put anyone in it. But what do you think? Um, I've been listening to Parade a lot mm. and imagining a production <clears throat> that would, uh, I feel like that, that exists in, in the writing about, um, white supremacy and all kinds of prejudice and, um, Andre Morin and I have talked about that show and I'd like to do that show with him. Oh, it would be beautiful. The voices. Oh my God, I'm already excited. Okay, do that. Uh, okay. Steve, what about you? <laughs> I would I would require a time machine for mine. Okay. Sounds good. I would want to go. I would want to go, just about ten years back in time. And see Jimmy Blendick play Sweeney Todd on Ooh. the festival stage. Mm. That with would be that, pretty amazing. Can you imagine up on the balcony and the trap door and the barbershop chair oh. bodies coming down and on the have festival. they ever done that they've never done that obviously i think it's on the i think it sometimes gets brought up but i think i think it's i think it's a worry that sometimes sondheim doesn't sell and i know have, and especially in that theater like that we have seen that's... that it doesn't we have seen that it doesn't sell you 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 have the sondheim fans who come and see it yeah. but then you're left with another six months of of running the show but <laughs> Oh, it's okay. Yeah, I'd be there every performance. Fiscally, fiscally sound year. I, I, I would have loved. I always wanted to see Jimmy play that role and Ooh. hear him sing that role. And I think it would have been. Uh, I, think I didn't know he was a singer. He has a he has a really good he has a really interesting voice. I mm -hmm. think it probably would have been a, a taxing role for him because it's a it's an unbelievably hard sing that, yeah. that role. Yeah. But uh, mm. yes, and, and I would and then I would happily be the beetle or something in it amazing I, so Thank i could you. watch it every night so that yeah. would be, yeah. <laughs> i would want i would want bridget wilson in there too i think oh, sure. she's just oh, so yeah. like silly and creepy and it would yeah. just be yeah it would be so good <laughs> yeah. Bridget in there. yeah okay 
Amazing. Uh, we have another question from the audience. Uh, Michelle Boniface is wondering, the poetry song is brilliant and beautiful. The highlight of the show for me, what is the origin? That song's written by Britta Johnson, who's a dear friend and collaborator. And uh, it's from a show that she wrote entirely, book lyrics, music, called um, Life After. Mm-hmm. And it's an extraordinary piece of theater. And um, it's been produced at Canadian stage and at the Old Globe in San Diego. And it was meant to have a production at Arena Stage in uh, Washington. Uh, and that that song is one of the best things she's ever written, which is really saying something because she's, I think, the best musical theater writer in the country. Mm-hmm. She's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, awesome. And another, again, general career question. What has been your all-time favorite role to play? It can be a, a musical or play or, or in a cabaret even. Um, and what did that role mean to you? Hmm. Here or, or just in general? Anywhere. I um, uh, I got to play Charles Guiteau in Assassins, mm. the, the Stephen Sondheim musical. And um, it was on paper, you know, it, 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 it might not have worked. The, 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 the cast was amazing, but we were in a small theater and we started out really, really tiny and then it it sort of we came into Toronto and it sort of exploded in things and everyone everyone just everyone just fit perfectly that yeah. everything everything came together in that show and I never I never never grew tired we remounted it three different times and we re-rehearsed it three different times and I never I never got sick of rehearsing it I never got sick of 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 living in that skin of that poor weird awful man it was uh talk about talk about playing monsters mm-hmm. um but but we never saw it that way we just saw them as flawed human beings and yeah i uh, I, I feel so lucky to uh, but at the same time here we did we did a production of the grapes of wrath and i got to play noah one of the sons and it's still my favorite thing that i've done here and i know a lot of people think oh boy that was a really dark show but there was so much joy in the cast, and so much, so much joy of of bringing it to to the stage with it. And I and I, I got to sit out one night and watch it, and I, and I was even more baffled at at the at the beautiful job that Anthony Cimolino did with directing it. And it was uh, so yeah, those 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 two. I there I stole two. I stole instead Perfect. of one. I stole two. Love it, love it. And what about you, Sarah? I'd say playing Mary in the the trilogy well two two thirds um but having a play a brand new doing a brand new play is a very special thing but um it's it's alive too when um you're doing it for the first time and so seeing changes made um based on the people playing the parts and by the second play and then the third one um kate hennig was writing very much with my voice in her head Mm -hmm. and and our relationship and that was a thrill and um it felt it fit just so so comfortably playing that part felt so easy and Mm -hmm. and wonderful and knowing that it was crafted with me in mind really is one of the greatest honors that um i've had as an actor Mm -hmm. and kate's words like whenever even emails from her (laughs) are beautiful you know like i know that sounds like a funny thing but when you get an email from kate hennig first of all you're like who kate but also it's just so beautifully written and i and i reread my emails like six times to make sure they make sense and like the words are correct because she's just so perfect so oh i can only imagine how the, the wonderful joy you must have had to have feel those words being like, yeah, this is me. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, we are basically at the end. However, oh, wow. um, Steve, there's a quick question for you. When did you finally discover you do have a fantastic singing voice? Uh, I don't know if I have yet. <laughs> oh, um, shut up. And Sarah, <laughs> will, Sarah will attest 
to my neurosis. Um, I started to sing second year in Montreal. We uh, at, at theater school in second year, we had to do a singing project. And I, I think uh, I had a wonderful teacher named Paul Keenan, who um, who really said, Oh, no, you can do this. And, uh, and I and it sort of it sort of matched what I did. So I, I, I then sort of that was a nice tangent to go off on and to, and to really pursue on the job training and as much vocal training as I could as I could find and, and sort of be a sponge with that sort of thing. But it but it wasn't for a long time. So I so I often oh, I often listen to Sarah and Noah and Jermaine and have to go. Nope, you're you belong here, too. You're OK. But I um <laughs> Sarah has had to talk me off the ledge a couple of times. So. <laughs> oh, it's, imposter syndrome, it gets us all, doesn't it? It's oh, a huge man. thing. Keep, yeah. It keeps us honest. It's true, it's true. <laughs> uh, and we have a lovely uh, comment here from uh, Jasmine. Um, she says that she's really enjoying this interview, as indeed um, she does every live Stratford Company event that she's watched, which is many, um, and she can't wait to see them all doing what they do, uh, what they so love on theater stages again. So that's Yay. what, thank what a thank you, a wonderful comment, Jasmine, thank you. Thank you. Um, and we are at time, so I just want to say thank you uh, both for being so candid this morning and letting me gush a little bit as well. That's always fun. Um, and also thank you at home who tuned in live today and then who will be tuning in um, uh, at a later date to watch this interview. Um, we're so thankful for your love of Meet the Festival interviews and we cannot wait to see you next season. So bye everybody. Thank you.